Stamics and Squeaks from the Roy Stevens William Costello Palming Method. Um, I'm Kurt Thompson and this is a video tutorial on how to get started on the static and squeak part of their program. I've gone through their entire program and I changed my amateur even temporarily. And I could say that um, it wasn't really my cup of tea and I didn't get a whole lot out of it except for a couple of great techniques um, that will actually build your, your range and your flexibility. So they're definitely worthy of including in your routine and that's what we're doing today. I will say that I don't encourage or even advocate you switching to the armisher. I'm not even going to tell you about it today. We're only doing these techniques as I've tweaked them. So I've cherry picked these out of the Roy Stevens William Costello um, palming method and uh, I've tweaked them a little bit my own way. So whatever you see here will probably be a little bit different than um, a Roy Stevens disciple would, would actually teach you. But um, I like how I do it and I've, I've liked the results that I've seen from students in my four month upper register course over the last four and a half years. So this actually works the way I do it. So I encourage you just to follow this and not get distracted um, with other ways. So um, keep your normal amateur setting. Keep that normal amateur setting you're using. We're not going to um, be changing amateur setting right now. We're using this as, a, this as a tool to increase your range and your flexibility. These are the static and squeaks, the, the static and squeak technique that uh, Roy Stevens and William Costello talked about. Um, the name comes from squeaks, like you'd hear, like any, like any squeak, a door squeaking, um, a machinery squeaking, static from like your air conditioner, central air or heating unit kind of makes that worrying kind of static sound. That's where it comes from. Here, we're not going for a full bodied sound as in the harmonic arpeggio. So if you haven't got that, the harmonic arpeggio tutorial, you definitely want to get that. It's like the kissing cousin of this one. Um, there, in that particular one, we're going for a full sound. Um, everything sounds normal and you're going up um, harmonically in open position. Um, here, we're not going to do that. Here, we're actually going for altitude over a normal sound. So we're, we're going to really back off on the air that we blow through. We're still trying to compress and make the air go through the horn faster, but we are definitely backing off on the air. We're starting much, much softer. In fact, the tone usually doesn't sound that great on this one. It sounds a little bit shrill, it's much softer. We are trying to go for um, altitude, trying to go high. So that said, we don't start low like we do in our harmonic, harmonic arpeggios. We are going to start high, relatively high. So um, for most trumpet players, I think that you could probably start on G right above the staff on this one. French horn players, I would encourage you to at least start at um, possibly E, the fourth space E in the treble clef. And trombone players, let's have you start somewhere around, yeah, let's see here. It wouldn't be a bad idea to start uh, somewhere around the, the B flat or D right above the bass clef staff. If you could start on the F, uh, that would be great. But um, you choose um, B flat or D. D would be actually better, right above um, the bass clef staff. So that's where you guys need to be starting. Uh, and then if you have a more of an advanced development of your armature, you definitely want to start higher. So I'll, I'll pick a couple of starting points and show you how it works. So just starting on G, this is concert F G on the trumpet. Of course, um, if you haven't had the other tutorials, what we're going to be doing is laying the instrument um, in the palm of your hand, but the, the hand doesn't allow any kind of curvature, so you can't really curve and pull the tubing in. So for trumpets, it's the easiest. You just lay the horn over and bring it up to your chops. The only pressure that you are able to get would be the weight of the horn. Trombone players, it's very similar. If it's too heavy, you could also use two hands trombone players like that if necessary. Um, French horn players, you definitely have to use two hands. You're just not going to be able to balance it that well. So I've had trombone players, trombone players, trumpet players and French horn players go through the four month brass upper register course and successfully been able to do this one. I don't yet have any data on euphonium or tuba players and I'm just going to go out on a limb that um, definitely tuba players, I don't know if that's even a go. Um, I don't think it would be possible. I don't know. We'll see. Um, and euphonium players, I don't have any experience with that yet either. Uh, maybe at some point. But So for right now, it's just um, I'm talking to you if you're a trombone player, French horn player, or trumpet player. So starting on G, just a G right up at the staff, and we're not going for a big full sound. Okay, that would 
call that one round and I want you to do about five rounds of these uh, so you can rest in between each one. So basically one round is uh, doing this in one, however long you go in one breath. Um, now that's, involved, that's if you're involved in my four month breaths upper register course. If you're not, you could de definitely stretch this out to a total of ten of those. So that would be one round and I would rest, <clears throat> flutter my lips, maybe wait ten seconds and do it again. Maybe wait twenty seconds depending on how I feel. So now let's just pretend that you have a little higher range and this time you're going to start on high C or high concert B flat. This would be if you're trumpet. For other instruments you're going to have to transpose that. Okay, there we got to triple G at the very end. So we're going for altitude, folks. We're not going for sound. We're just going for altitude. Roy Stevens and William Costello believe that um, the harmonic arpeggios work a certain set of muscles in your chops and that the static and squeaks worked a different set of muscles responsible, responsible for um, playing that per register. So that's, I think that's why you see them paired up like that. Harmonic arpeggios and a static and squeaks. You're kind of... Um, you're kind of covering all bases as far as your embouchure development when you're doing that. And so uh, the last one would be you could start even a little bit higher if you wanted. Um, sometimes I just, um, I just like shooting, you know, shooting in the dark, but I just try to start high and go even a little bit higher. There we go. I don't know if you heard that, but it was just a little touch of a triple C at the end. Came out about quadruple piano. And um, so I kind of mix and match. Sometimes I'll start off, well, I usually don't start off on G. I, I will start off on either high C, the second one that you heard me do, or the last one that you heard me do. So I kind of alternate back and forth. I only do five of these, five rounds. And the reason is, is because I go through all 65 techniques um, in my course just about every day. It's a lot of techniques takes a lot of time and I just don't have time to uh, to invest a whole a whole lot on any one particular technique so anyway that is the um, Roy Roman William Costello static and squeaks and for a quick review remember we're going for altitude over sound so you want to be soft these are not going to be normal notes you would be playing anywhere in any any kind of ensemble so they don't really sound that good they're very soft they're very squeaky, uh, they're not really in tune, That's, we're not going for that, we're going for altitude only, we're trying to go as high as we can, soft, and remember, you got your horn, you're not curving your fingers, you're laying the horn right in the palm of your hand, palm of your hand, and you're only using the, the weight of the horn only, comes at an angle, and that's all the pressure you get, folks, just the weight of the horn. So trombone and French horn players, you might have a slight advantage, obviously, because uh, the weight of your horn is more. will give you maybe just a little bit extra um, ability on this particular technique. All in all, when you factor this in, you got the static and squeaks, the harmonic arpeggios, the two isometric uh, techniques, plus the pencil exercise. It really is uh, a super combination to energize your range building and endurance enhancement uh, routine. I would definitely encourage you. Uh, just to repeat, um, this one here, if you happen to get the entire uh, Roy Roman, William Costello video tutorial package that I have, which would have all of them, um, you could allocate between 10 and 20 minutes um, per day for all these techniques if you really like them. If you're in my course, don't do that. I want you to keep it at where I told you originally. So if you're involved in my course watching this particular tutorial, I want you to keep the, all the Roy Roman and William Costello palming techniques between 6 minutes and up to 10 minutes a day. And no more than that. Simply because you have so many techniques that are going to be piled on top of you. You don't want to be doing this, um, overdoing this or be overkill. So uh, I'm trying to think of anything else I can tell you about this one. I would just encourage you um, to use all um, the Roy Stephen and William Costello uh, tutorials I have because they kind of all go together. They all kind of dovetail nicely. 
Uh, but if you need to start off um, one by one, uh, then no problem, go ahead and do this one. But do look at the other ones, they are important, they do work together um, to make your goals happen uh, quicker. So anyway, this has been my tutorial about the William Costello, Roy Stevens tutorial. It's Kurt Thompson's way of um, tweaking um, some of their material. And I know that if you invest time on this, it won't take that long to start seeing results. Give it a couple of weeks and you will start to kind of have that feeling of surety and strength here when you go to play, especially in the upper register. So don't forget it's trumpetsizzle.com. You can always go there and click on the products page. I have a ton of video tutorials right now stretched all across the board from all kinds of techniques and I know that they'll help you as well. So trumpetsizzle.com. I'm Kurt Thompson. Catch you next time.